right, meeting my new guest here. Welcome back to Pace Sunday, our next guest. Well, his life was quite the journey and his uh, quest to be just a normal kid. His mother took him on a hippie counterculture ride for over a dozen years in the late 70s and 80s, hitchhiking from commune to commune throughout the Southwest and Northwest in search of what his mother called utopia. Well, she never found it. In fact, she found nothing but hurt. And the Decade Plus Ride is chronicled in detail in his new book, Free Spirit, Growing Up on the Road, Off the Grid, mind you. Pleased to have author and San Francisco native Josh Safran with us today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Well, we talked a little bit off camera when I first met you, but was it tough to write the book because you went through hell and back as a, as a young man? It was. The first half of Free Spirit was, uh, was more fun. It was sort of my mother and I hitchhiking across the American West. I, I was born into a commune of a coven of witches in the Haight-Ashbury, and so they were <laughs> odd memories, but not necessarily uh, unpleasant ones. And then the second half of the book w was darker and much harder to write. Yeah. Um, well, take us, you, you call your mom Claudia in the book. I do. Tell us about how it started, where you went, and sure. how you ended up. So I was born a little warlock. I was the only boy born into a coven of witches in the Haight-Ashbury in 1975. And my mother was a group of women that, part of a group of women that decided that they were reclaiming religion from the patriarchy. So they were worshiping the goddess, worshiping a pantheon of female spirits, kind of reinventing religion from the ground up. Uh, and there was a rift that was caused when I was born because I was a boy. And a lot of these sisters, as my mother called these women, blamed her for having a boy and bringing a male into this coven. Um, and eventually my mother uh, left uh, San Francisco and, and the coven in part because she said witchcraft was becoming too organized of a religion, believe okay. it or not. Uh, you're, you're tripping your brains out, um, but it's still like a church. Right. Um, so we took to the open road in 1980 when Reagan was elected. And you're five. I was five, yeah. uh, four and a half, five, yeah, and uh, my mother was convinced that nuclear war was imminent, and uh, she met up with sort of a, a, a drifter, grifter, kind of countercultural guy, uh, and we lived in a van uh, at that point, and we moved across the southwest, and uh, until I was nine, we were basically looking for a utopia. And you just wanted to be a normal kid. I did. Did you know what normal was? Not right away. Of yeah. course, when you're, when you're that little, you sort of assume that everyone lives like you, and no one refers to their mother as mother, because my mother felt that being called mother was a limiting sexist uh, term, oh, because boy. she was a full human being with all that that entailed. Your and teachers must have loved you when you got into school. <laughs> it, it took me a while to get to school, and when, <laughs> when I got into school when I was in sixth grade, yeah. and that was a tough... So uh, you were kind of homeschooled along the way, but then all of a sudden you had this classroom situation. I did. It must have been tough. The kids teased you, and... Uh, they did, and, and I don't blame blame them in a way. I mean, I literally emerged from a wall of forest uh, in 1986 covered in pine needles and tree sap wearing thrift store clothing yeah. that my mother had patched up. And yeah. I'm Josh, here I am. <laughs> exactly. I was like, hello. And, you know, I, I get into the classroom and I don't know that I'm supposed to raise my hand to be called upon. I don't know that, um, you know, people don't want to hear about U.S. foreign policy in the middle of, uh, you know, English class. And well. Go to Berkeley, actually. Right. That's true. <laughs> I did. It was just the wrong place. So it wasn't... Exactly. Well, Le your mom meets Leopold, who's a Salvi uh, Salvadorian immigrant. Uh, That's right. He was not documented. She went through uh, years of abuse. You went she through did. some abuse. You saw some yeah. sadistic things. It I did. gets pretty dark in the back half of the book. It does. That must yeah. have been tough to explore. It was. I mean, I think one of the hardest things that I struggled with as a man, you know, today writing this book. Um, was the sense of overpowering shame and humiliation that I wasn't protecting my mother. I can sit here today and say, well, I was only 9, 10, 11, 12, I was young. What could I have done? But at the time, I'm not thinking that way. I'm thinking, I'm a, and I'm a tough kid, and here's my mom being brutalized and beaten in front of me, and I'm, and I'm too scared for my own life to do anything. And that's, that's a very difficult thing to overcome. What's your mom's reaction? And did you consult with her when you wrote the book? I did. I interviewed her for a year. Oh, uh, boy. Took her to lunch every Sunday in Berkeley. Sure. And uh, all the other Berkeley moms were like, how come my grown son doesn't come back and interview me about my fascinating life? And I was like, if only <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> Read the book. So. Um, well, tell us, what did you learn about yourself? Yeah. N not so much on the journey, but the journey back to write the book. Well, I mean, the one thing was uh, part of the process of sort of once I got out, uh, I, we lived off the grid without running water, electricity, toilets, uh, refrigeration until I was 17. And when I went to college, which was a big deal for me, of course, I began meeting all these people. And my whole life, I continue to meet people who lament the fact that they grew up 
with running water in the suburbs, right. with nuclear families, without smashing and screaming, and they can eat, eat as much sugar as they want and watch television, and they're depressed. Walk a day in my shoes. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I have a friend who's kind of suicidal. My mother never loved me. You know, I don't know how to, you know, navigate the public transit system or whatever it is. And I think, well, I'm, I'm very self-reliant. I'm very, I have a lot of self-confidence because I've always, you know, taken care of myself. And well, it's a, it's quite a journey. He's an attorney now, by the That's way. Right. So uh, it all worked out well. Part of my rebellion. Yeah, you know. <laughs> there you go. So nice to meet you. Good luck with the book. Thank you very much. Thanks right. for having me. For more information about Free Spirit, log on to Jay Safran, S A F R A N, right there. dot com. That's Jay Safran. dot com. We'll be back with more Bay Sunny right after the break. Stay right there.